What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I wanted to dive into an incredibly useful tool for managing Unix-like servers and that's Webman. And if you're into Linux or looking to step into the tech field, you're in the right place. And today I want to explore Webman's capabilities and how to set it up on Ubuntu 22.04. So grab your coffee and let's get to it. All right, before we get started, I wanted to give you guys an overview of Webman. And I'm at Webman's website is webman.com. And this is where you can get all the documentation. You can actually download it and you can get everything you need to set up Webman. And of course, I had a link down in the description of the video. But Webman is a web-based interface for system administrators for Unix-like systems. With Webman, you can handle administrative tasks like managing users, disk quotas, services, and configuration files. Plus, it's great for modifying and controlling open source applications like Vine, DNS server, Apache, HTTP server, PHP, uh, MySQL, and many other applications. And one thing I love about it is simplifies complex server management tools and that's making them more accessible to both beginners and experienced users alike. And that's one of the reasons I recommend people that are new to Linux and you set up a Linux server for the first time to get Webmin installed versus installing a full blown desktop environment and you'll have access to everything you need to do for that server from the web. Now Webmin's uh, user friendly interface and extensive documentation make it a go-to choice for systems administrators. And today we'll see just how easy it is to install and start using Webman on Ubuntu server. So let's hop over to my virtual machine. I can walk you guys through the full build. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so let's go on and walk through the install of Webman. And first off, I'm connected to a Ubuntu 22.04 server edition using SSH. The first thing you should do whenever you install any new piece of software on a system, a Linux server at least, you need to update the system. So let's run through that right fast. So all you have to do is run sudo apps updates and then I'm gonna run them together. So ampersand, ampersand, sudo apps upgrade, and then dash y, that'll answer that question for us, which I'm sure this server is up to. I just cloned it from a previous server that I, virtual machine that I have set up already. And that one I'm sure is updated, yeah. And from what it looks like, it's updated. Now the next thing we need to do is add a few dependencies because we're gonna install a user PPA and I just want to show you guys what we'll install. So I'm gonna just paste it in there. I already have it written out in the text file, but sudo apt install software properties dash common app transport https and then wget if it's not installed on your system so let's go down and press enter whatever is not installed it'll install whatever is installed it'll kind of reinstall it or just verify that it's installed on the system and skip it all right so we get to go we got our dependencies out the way and just so you guys know all this is within the documentation on webman's site uh, i just wrote it all out and copied it all into a text file personally so i can run through everything pretty quick and what i'm gonna do is add a ppa well, first, we have to add the GPG key. So let's add that first. I'm going to paste that in there as well. And basically, what it's doing is wget q and then the link to the actual GPG key. And then we're going to run that sudo apt key add. So let's go down and press enter. And that was essentially add the GPG key in order for us to install from Webmin's repository. Just wanted to explain it right fast. But let's go down and press enter. That'll go down and add that key. It's super simple to do that. And then now we can add our repository. And so let's paste that in there and let's just run through the command, but it's sudo add app dash repository and dev and then the link and storage contrived. So like I said, this information is out there. 
I didn't want to walk through it all. As far as typing all this out, doesn't make sense to, it'll slow down the video. But let's go down press enter and it'll go through and add our repository. And the next thing you want to do is run sudo app updates and press enter. As you can see, it adds that uh, webman repository there. As you can see, it hits it. And so you get to go to install from that repository. And this is the best way to do it. You'll have the most up-to-date package of webman. It'll update from that repository. So as updates come out, it'll update from that repository as well. So let's go down and install webman. So all we have to do is type sudo apps install and then webman now and then you can put the dash y in there so it'll go through and just install without asking that question but install any other dependencies that it may need and then install webman the package and i go down and come back when this finishes all right so the installation is complete and webman will automatically start and we can check the status by running sudo system and then webman that service so let's go down and press enter and you check the service you'll see that it's active and running and it's also enabled so each time you reboot the system webman will start up so let's go down and quit that and then one other step you want to make sure or at least verify the firewall so we can run sudo the ufw status and it's not going to show anything because by default you bunt to when you install it the firewall is inactive but i recommend you guys turn it on and you also open up the ports and the webmin you know admin panel is at port 10,000. so let's go through and add that right fast so let's type sudo ufw allow 10,000 and press enter and then also let's do the same thing for open ssh because i'm connected to it that way so open ssh press enter let's allow that and then let's go down and activate our firewall so sudo ufw enable and then this will go through and enable our firewall so all we had to type is y press enter and basically what that was was just a warning just to verify that you may lose your ssh connection if you don't have these ports open if you didn't open up these ports then you'll lose access to it if you're SSH into the server. And if it's like the cloud server, you wanna make sure that you open up the port for open SSH. Otherwise, you'll lose connection. You won't be able to get into it unless you click on in within the cloud manager in order to connect directly to the server. Now let's go down and go to the site and all we have to do is figure out what our IP address is. And that's another thing, you wanna make sure you set a static IP address so this doesn't change. Otherwise you're gonna be trying to figure out what the IP address is. I just kept it DHCP for right now because this is just temporary server. You know, I'm not gonna use it past this point. So we can just copy our IP address. So it's 192.168.10.172. So just find out what it is. Just type IP space A, and then we can go over to our browser. And then let's open up another tab and let's paste in our IP address. And it's not gonna work because it automatically tried to go, but we have to put our port in there. So 10,000 after that. So press enter. Uh, you're gonna have this connection. It's not private. That's only because we don't have a SSL cert on the server. You can install one at uh, some point in the future, but just to get it get started, just for me to show you guys, I'm not gonna go through that process. We can go down and hit proceed. And all we have to do is use our username and password to log into the server. And you can use your root account. I'm gonna just use my Josh account. And then let's go down and type in our password for that account. It's the exact same account that you use to log into the system. So let's go down and hit sign in and boom, we are in webmin. And I don't wanna go too far into this, but you can look at the dashboard and you got a whole bunch of options. You also have modules you can add into it. That's kind of like the most important thing. This dashboard, you can see everything about your server and then you have modules you can add to it. Let's go through and just look at a few things. So we're going to webmin, you can set up backups. You can change the language and theme of it. Webmin action logs, the configuration, server index, webmin users. So this is just users for webmin. Now if you go into system, this is where your user accounts boot up, shut down, change passwords, this network file system, file system backups. This is everything dealing with the system. You can even schedule cron jobs. I know that's kind of like a difficult task for some people that are new to Linux. Cron jobs is important because that's basically how you automatically run jobs on the server. And you can set them up here. And then let's go on and just minimize that. And then we can go to server. So you can look at the user mail, the SSH server. That's just one of the, the applications that we have installed on here. That's really the only application we got installed on here other than webmin. But it will show 
all your applications that are on here. So if you got Apache or MySQL, you can see some of the information there. So tools, you can go to command shell. This will allow you to execute commands, custom commands, file manager. And I don't want to go through all of it, but you can look at your files on your system, which is super dope. You know what I'm saying? You can check out your protected web directories, system and server status. So you can check out all your services that you got running on here. So like for instance, the NFS server, send mail server, DHCP server, QMail server, bind, you know, all that good stuff. And as you can see, the status of it is not on there. So it's not installed. That's essentially what that's saying. And then right here, NFS is installed, but it's down. It's not running. You have to start that. And then you got one cool thing that I want to show you guys. You can run the terminal from the browser, which is super cool. So if you want to open it up and run your updates or install some software, you can do whatever you want from here. I won't go through any much more. You can upload files, download files, networking, check out your network monitoring, Linux firewall. You can manage that. And in here we can go through and make changes to the firewall, the Linux firewall. Also IP version six, you know, network configuration as well. You can modify your network interfaces. And also we can go check out our hardware. You can set up Linux RAID, modify that. You can create a array, logical volume management, partition, printer administration, so cups. As long as you got cups installed. Right now we don't have cups installed. That's why it's not showing anything. Cluster, so you can check out all your cluster settings. And then this is what I was talking about, kind of important, like your modules. So you got a whole bunch of modules in here for whatever services that you're running on the server. So you got a Kerberos 5 server or LDAP client server or client, LDAP users and groups, MySQL databases, like I said, once you install services, you can add these modules and they can monitor all that stuff. If you got a, a squid proxy server set up, SSL tunnels, man it's just so much stuff you could do in webmin and to me it's similar to cockpit but i think this has a little bit more you know details for us you know what i'm saying now I'll just show you guys a little bit more you can pin the unpin navigation bar or you can turn it to dark mode which is super cool they got a, a shortcut to the terminal so they'll open it up the terminal and then we can close that out you can set your favorites so favorite services or favorite things that you want to see theme configuration so you modify the theme they do have other themes you know you could change the login page to dark as well and they also have like background themes and all that good stuff and then I gotta do is go back to the dashboard and let's see hit continue because I, I didn't save that but yeah that's our dashboard for the server and so that's how you install and start using webmin on ubuntu 22.04 i hope this tutorial was helpful in showing you how powerful and user-friendly webmin can be for managing your servers remember it's tools like these that make linux administration more approachable and fun and if you have any questions or want to share your experience with webmin, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Keep It Tech channel for more Linux tips and tricks. Until next time, keep exploring, and of course, keep it tech.